So to walk me through what it's like for a first timer coming to the bunny ranch and they want to hire um, a girl, how, how does that work? So there's a few different ways that somebody can go about connecting with the lady. First is simply walking into the location without an appointment. You aren't necessarily sure who it is you want to connect with, but you just kind of want to go and see for yourself. So when you walk in without an appointment, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to check your ID, verify you don't have any like bombs or anything in your bag. They'll ask you to open up your bag, make sure there's nothing problematic in there, which usually there's not. And then they're going to hit the bell to allow the ladies knowledge that we now have a guest in the parlor. The ladies are then going to come up and kind of stand in a line in front of you and introduce themselves one by one by name. Then the host, who's the person who has now also checked your ID, is going to encourage you to walk up to the lady, take her by the hand, and then she will take you on a tour of the facilities. After that tour, you'll then end up back in that lady's suite, depending on the brothel. Some brothels have separate negotiation rooms. Others do it in the ladies' room. In my location, we just go right back to our personal suite. And then we have that conversation about what sorts of things might you be interested in, what kind of connection you're looking for, and kind of go from there. The second way that happens is if someone does want to set up an appointment, they know they're traveling out, it's going to be a big experience and, and an occasion for them. And so they really want to make sure that they're connecting with the right person. So you might go onto the website and scroll through some of the different photos, read some of the profiles, watch a few videos before choosing which email or which lady you want to email. Then you'll be able to email back and forth, get to know her a little bit and share some information about what it is you're interested in. Then you and the lady are going to agree upon a day and a time that you're going to meet. And then you'll phone the ranch to place a deposit, usually 10% to just kind of have like a placeholder reservation, which then goes towards the actual booking date. And then you come into the ranch and instead of a lineup, you'll ring the button two times instead of just the one time to let the front person know, hey, I'm here to see someone specific. Please don't send the cavalcade of sex workers and have them all lined up in front of me. I know who I'm here to see. Right. So then the negotiation about what kind of sex acts they want to do and the price is then done on the phone before they come in? Nope. All pricing conversations by Nevada law have to take place on the brothel property. About as close as we are legally able to share over email is say something along the lines of, oh, that's in the ballpark range. If somebody says, oh, I've got this kind of budget or this price in mind, I can tell somebody like, hey, you're in the right track or, okay, so we'll have to do some adjusting when we meet in person or, okay, that's like a, a four-figure experience versus something that's more prolonged, which may be like a five-figure experience experience. But unfortunately, the law doesn't really allow us to go much beyond that. Yeah, I remember that was Charlotte was saying that, which I found to be kind of bizarre. So then it's like, you don't know exactly what you're in for. And like, you put a deposit down, but you don't know, like, what exactly you're going to end up paying in the long run. Um, I guess you guys probably have some kind of minimum deposit, at the very least. Um, just to set up the appointment and then the negotiations can go from there. But you have to do the negotiations yourself, right? It can't be oh, a third absolutely. party. No. Do you, do you, okay. So, cause just cause personally, I'm really, I'm terrible at talking about money. I'm really bad and I don't have an agent and I'm my own person and I, you know, give people my rates, but like it, it's, it's an issue that I have. So do you find that having to negotiate with people for pricing, has that helped you at all with maybe like, I don't know, like recognizing your self-worth, talking about money? Like, do you find that uncomfortable or is that just something that you're totally used to by now? It's a factor in the process. In order from us to get from point A to point B, there's got to be that middle ground where we do have that very real conversation about dollars and cents. And the way I like to think of it is not so much a negotiation because that feels very combative. I like to think mm. of it more as a conversation because I'm not trying to make you go outside of your comfort zone. You know exactly where you are financially, what you are comfortable doing, and I know what I have my rates kind of set at. 
So we're, we're not haggling back and forth. Instead, we're collaborating and figuring out, okay, well, what do we want an experience to look like? What are the most important things for you? What things do you really want to focus on? Where do you want to spend the most time? What kinds of things maybe aren't as important to you, but if we have time for, let's go ahead and do those as well. So this way, by the time we're leaving my suite and heading to the front desk to go ahead and book the experience, both of us are feeling really happy with the experience that we've already had. You 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 sound almost. Uh, it sounds almost more like you're like a financial advisor. <laughs> I don't know. I I guess for me, I don't focus on the money. That's not yeah. my motivation for being in this industry. If I was worried about money, I probably would have gone into the financial sector. I. Yeah focus more on the value that I'm able to bring to people's lives, what kind of needs they have that I'm possibly able to fulfill, questions that I could answer, information that I can share. That to me is like the real value in what I do is being able to share those sorts of things with people. And oftentimes I find that that value alone makes people understand when I say this experience is going to be X dollars and cents. And they're like, oh, Okay, well, that makes sense. All right, thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so they paid, and you're you're ready to move forward. What are the next steps? You take them back to your room. Do you have to check them for any unsightly issues around the genitals? Anything that might be a concern? Mm-hmm. So, by law. Legal sex workers in Nevada are required to be tested every seven days for STDs and STIs. We are literally the most tested population on the planet. And as such, we do take safety very, very seriously. Condoms, dental dams, protection is required for any and all sex acts. And before the experience even gets booked, after that conversation has happened, but before we leave my suite and go to the window, we first do something called a DC, which is our very polite way of saying, why, yes, we are going to have you drop trouser and we are going to take this wipe and make sure that everything looks happy and healthy down below. I've uh, talked to some girls who say that sometimes they like to give their customer a sensual bath first, and that kind of helps them check them in like a non-confrontational way. And then also too, just ensures that they're clean and, mm-hmm. you know, like, cause it could have been a long drive through the desert, you know, with no air conditioning, you know, who knows what kind of condition they may be in when they show up. Do you do anything like that? Um, so sometimes usually in the Nevada brothel setting, typically you want to go ahead and do that DC before any sort of financials exchange hands this gotcha. way. Everything we've discussed, we're making sure, yes, we can actually do those things rather than arriving at the other side and going, oh, actually, we can't do anything. And we're just going to have to now reinvent our experience on the fly. I I feel like that would be almost more confrontational to somebody than just that. Hey, okay, so to tell you a little bit about my safety, here's the things I've done for safety. And now this is the next part of that safety, which is what keeps us both safe. So I kind of like to take almost an educational stance on it in a way where I almost like to normalize it, where it's, it's not a big deal. Like, hey, This should be a part of the conversation anytime you have sex. Hey, when's the last time you had STD or STI paperwork? Mine was done this past Wednesday as a legal sex worker. It's done every seven days. Another thing that we do here for protection is this little check. And then I explain what's going to happen before actually going ahead and doing so. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.